Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Still battling with the cold, but getting better. All is well at this end. I'm hoping all is well with you. I thought I would challenge myself today to make some greeting cards with matching envelopes just from book pages and things like that. But I want to show you a couple different ways to do them. Uh, the whole idea is that they're going to be flat because we, I want to be able to put them inside a junk journal as a little um, extra surprise. Somebody can find and pull out a greeting card with an envelope that they can use uh, for gift giving or note writing or something like that. Um, and well, I'll, okay, so my challenge to myself was, can I take one page and make the envelope and the matching card with the same piece of paper? So that was my challenge to myself. And, and so I think what I'm going to do is just going to make some basic ones first and then try the challenge. So let's see how that goes. Don't know, but I'm going to show you some very easy ways to make um, matching greeting cards and envelopes. Um, okay, so the first one is probably the most ridiculously super easy way to do this. Um, I only have one of these pages, so uh, we're going to make the world's easiest envelope at first. So I'm just going to take... This is, I think, the world's easiest envelope. You just fold up. Okay, this paper is a little brittle, so I might have to reinforce it. Um, so apparently it's not the easiest envelope in the world, but we'll reinforce it so it'll be okay. And then I'll go like that. So um, I have my basic envelope shape, and I'm just going to glue the sides. That's it. That's pretty darn easy. I would glue this part, because then you know you're going to glue the exact right piece. Go very thin with this. Go close to the edge. And then do the same on the other side. And your heavy work is pretty much done, other than the fact I have a fracturing piece of paper, which I can deal with easily, so that's not a problem. Okay, so we have the envelope. Let's go ahead and just deal with that little issue. I think I'm just going to do some uh, washi tape on this one, just for fun, and um, just seal that little problem. Okay, what have I got? I got that. No, not that. Something that actually matches with it would be nice. Um, okay, I'm looking for something maybe that has black in it. Okay, can she find anything with black in it? No, not right now. That's okay. I've got like a million. I got a million. Okay, here's something. I've got a million washi tapes over here. Um, this little guy. It looks like a measuring tape of some sort. I don't know, just because it had black in it, I thought I'd use that. So I'm just going to use this to reinforce. Probably going to run it over the old Scotch Create glue stick to give it a little more. Um, strength of adherence. Just sort of roll with it here. Use what you got. I mean, maybe you have fabric. Maybe you have, um, if you don't have washi tape, you can just use another piece of paper. You don't even have to use washi tape, but I just thought, well, maybe I grabbed a bunch of old papers, so they're all going to be fracturing. I don't know. Okay, halfway. Too far away, too far away. Halfway. It's already got glue on the other side. And then Fold it up, oh, let's make sure it sticks on the other side and then fold it this way, this would be better. There we go, so we have it sealed. And then just trim it and trim it. And then maybe we should do the same to the top piece here. Oh, I still have more, that's good. Okay, just get a piece. Oh, move too close, sorry, let me back it up now. Yeah, I still have brain fog. Um, from this cold, not COVID, was tested, so yay. Yay, don't have to worry about that. Um, there we go. And fold it over. And uh, yeah, all done. So that's pretty easy, right? Get a little reinforcement, carry on. We're rocking, we're rolling, and you can mass make these envelopes so easily and so quickly, and they're just so darn cute. And I have a little, like, poor Pam alignment there. So we can always come in with the fix-it move, which is just the old craft knife, making it all nice. I hope that's a sharp blade. That didn't sound like I, I got it. Okay, now much better. Okay, now it's all pretty, like it, it was meant to be that way. And it's a functional little envelope. Nice. Okay. So now if I wanted to do a matching, I don't can't do a matching one because I only had one of those papers, but let's say I want to use, I'll use this one because it's here. More music paper. Um, so what I want to do is make sure that my glue is adhered and then I want to assess how big my little 
envelope or my card can be, and it's going to be narrower than my um, my envelope, obviously, because I have some glueage in there. So this is cardstock. You may or may not have cardstock. You don't have to use cardstock. You can, you can, and you can also. It doesn't have to be a card. You can make, you could make. Okay, let's just do that. Let's let's use. Let's do this basic one first. This is just printer paper, copy paper. And I just want to make a pretty little piece of stationery to go in here that would be nice and that can fit inside here. Because um, you, you may not have cardstock. I know not everybody has cardstock. So I'm just going to make a mark. This is called the Easy Cheating Measuring Way. I know it's, I want it to come in here. So I want it to come in about here. Isn't that cute? That's really cute, isn't it? Um, here, we'll put you over here. We'll use you for something. Maybe we'll even put you in here. So I'm going to cut a long piece, and then I'll, and I, I'll prob probably want to tri-fold it to make it stationary-like. Let's see if I can even see my mark still. The craft mat helps here. Can you see that? Not really. Put you in a better position. Okay, to see everything. Oh, er. Okay. So I just squared it with the thing. I see where my little mystery mark is. I'll put this upside down so I have the hard metal closer to the the base, my craft mat. I should probably get a new blade on here. And this is how I do it. This is how you, you're not supposed to do it, but this is how I do it. Put your glasses on. I know there's a little thingy. I can never get it to work. Um, and then look away or put your glasses on and break that off and then put that in some safety place. <laughs> that was my garbage. Um, don't tell anybody. Um, but so nobody will get cut by it. And then you'll have a nice fresh blade and life will be grand. The, something about the nice fresh blade makes everything wonderful. And I could cut some of this off. Do I really need to? I don't really want to. I think it's going to be just fine. But I want to make it look coherent. Um, okay, so this was in the other one. So I could use this to some degree. I mean, the most simple thing I could do. The, obviously, the most easy, simple pimple thing I could do is just glue this to the top and use it as a writing paper stationary accent. Let's just do that because we can only go up from here. So this is baseline, baby simple, but looks cute and cohesive. Maybe that's the word I want. Okay, that's not exactly straight, but we have it here, we have it here, we have it here. So there's some uniformity, but maybe we do want a little bit of music note or something, for gosh sakes. It looks a little barren up there. Maybe I could steal some music notes from this one. How about that? Let me steal a stanza. Let me steal some notes. How about a chord, anyone? Anybody heard a chord? Um, I guess there's just something skinny here. Something skinny that I could just put that shows that it's music-like. And I was thinking along the music theme. It doesn't take much, you know what I mean? It really doesn't take much in the world of paper to make things look cohesive. Maybe we'll put something there, or I don't know. Let me fold it up a bit first. Okay, that's gonna be too big, I think. If I do the, that's the, that kind of fold. Too big. So let me get rid of some of this. Maybe it's a little long. Let me go here. That looks good, right? Can you see that? Yep. Shoom. I mean, there's a million and one to make ways to make cards, but these are very simplistic, um, basic, easy cards. Maybe I went too small. No, I think it's all right. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to fold them exactly even. No, you don't. I know you think you do, but you don't. So you can make it look bigger than it really is. Because I probably cut too much off. Whoop. Stay. This would be an ideal place for... Whoa, where's my pens? Where's my pen? Hold on. i got to get my bone folder. Don't go anywhere. <clears throat> I'm coming. I've got my bone folder. Come in. Oh yeah, I forgot you can hear me because I've got my mic with me. Um, okay, so here's, I'm just going to bone fold this up a little bit to give it some nice creasing. There we go. And let's see if that fits. If we're lucky, it'll fit. And it doesn't quite fit. Yep, no, I'm not right at the right spot. Of course, of course not. So that means I have to fold it in a little shorter. 
You know, if I would have measured it, like the measuring people do, they don't have these issues. I do. Okay, I still think that looks really cute as a little piece of paper, a note, note paper. Where'd my little note go? I totally forgot about you. I do want to put you on here somewhere, but you don't seem like you have a, a perfect place to go. Now that, okay, maybe I'm just going to, I'm going to put you down here, like on the side. Why? I don't know. But it, it gives me cohesiveness and I'm feeling good about it. You'll probably come up with a better idea. I'm just going to use a little bit of brown or gray. No, hello, this is black ink to pop, make it pop. Okay. There. Okay. And you could draw lines or not. I think I'm going to choose not so the person has a blank. Now, isn't that that's just a, such a cute little simple thing? And, and, and we are basically done. Now, you could... I feel like I want to put something there. Like a something... Maybe related. Can't I? Oh, we could. Um, my goodness, this is one. This one has an interesting name. We won't use that one. Um, I don't know where I came across that one. <laughs> um, lamp our feet. How a firm foundation. Um, hmm. Um. No, don't want to do that. I want to use a punch. Something like a butterfly. I need like a butterfly or something that I can just glue here and I'd feel really good about it. Yeah, here's some flowers, butterflies. You, you could look nice there. You're very nice there. Maybe put you here. You're nice there. Okay, just for some, just for some fun. Well, that's probably the back window. Okay, put you on this side. But I'll only glue half the butterfly. Okay, just a little bit. That's Fabrifix glue, clear silicone glue. Fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. That was that was too much glue. See how that happens sometimes? Okay, did I get it in the middle? No. All right, and there, and I just have a little, like a little something. Very simple, could be tucked into any junk journal. Um, maybe we will tuck it into this one we are working on now. We'll find a little spot. I'm sure there's a little spot. there and that'll probably get stuck on something because I didn't wipe off all the excess glue. If you get in there and you do the roll technique that will get rid of those little glue balls before they dry. That's a that's a handy little tip if you've over glued. Not that anybody would over glue. We would never do that. No, 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 no. But if it happens in the dark and nobody knows that's what you do. And there it is. It's in there. Okay so now let's attempt to do one Oh, maybe this is a bigger one, so this will this will help me cheat. Um, and I already did that to it, so I have to deal with that. So let me take off all the white space, right? Is that what I want to do? No. Let me do let me do this. Let me let me take off this bottom music piece here, and maybe we'll you will use that for the the card on the inside. No. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. What are you doing, Pam? I'm going to make a wider, a wider envelope this time, just for fun. Be more like a business envelope kind of thing, because the page is bigger. So I'm just going to take off the white space stuff, and we can even use this white space stuff to bind edges. So, I think as we saw in the last video, but let's just see where we're going, because we actually have no idea. We're just creating on the fly and having fun. I thought I'd just hang out with you guys and where things go. Oh, I know what I can do. I can do that old thing. Okay, is this a square? Did I do all right? I will get like an 8x8 eight eight square. I'm a little shy, but let me do an 8x8 eight eight square so we can we can do the other kind of envelope. Um, okay, you're too short here and you're too long there, so I have to at least get like 7 eighths and 3 quarters or something. So I'm going to make these the same size. I know I'm forcing myself to measure. Not liking it at all. Totally against my grain, but whatever. Sometimes you gotta bite the biscuit. Okay, so we have that. So this is a square. Basically, I just made a square. So, we can do, let's make a little envelope. Bring these to the middle-ish. Hoping that's the middle. Let's get them straight now, Pam, this would help. Put you there. I'm using my craft mat to help me find centers. That does help. Okay, there, and there, that looks pretty straight. Okay, pretty darn good, not bad. And then fold this up, maybe a little, like an inch, like not an inch, maybe like half an inch above. 
So we have this bottom is totally sealed. And this, you can uh, just glue this in place and leave that up, or you can fold that little flapper in, which I might do. So let me just envelope seal it first. You, I don't think you really need those envelope punch things that are out there. You can. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using them, but I, I just don't think, I don't think they're necessary when it's so easy to make an envelope. But if you want to get into the world of fancy envelopes, maybe you do need that stuff. I, I have never done really fancy envelopes. I do like basic, very basic, simple design. Okay, that's not bad. Got glue on the, the back side, and that's not even, but it's okay. It's all good. Just fold it down more, and then we want to, like, the envelope should come like this, the flipper. All right, so now we have that. So I think I'm going to ink it up a little bit so you can see the edges better. Need my little squirt bottle. This just has water in it, and this is how I rehydrate my drying ink pad, which is eternally drying. Okay. Oh, 15, yeah. Okay. Okay, now we'll make a card this time and not a piece of stationery, but these things are beautiful to add to junk journals because they fit well, they marry with the idea of writing, journaling, you know, writing cards. It can inspire somebody to um, mail a card. If you have the right thickness of paper, I mean, think about the thickness of a regular envelope. That's the thickness you want to make. You, you can mail envelopes made out of book pages but they have to be the right thickness so they don't get jammed in the machines um, and you'll just have to put like a blank label on the front or something so you can write the name and your return address and stuff like that but yeah they are mailable and just make sure they're very flat and they don't get jammed in the machines and you can always test mail one to yourself not a bad idea just to see if it comes back okay but what a fun way to send valentine cards or birthday cards um, and just make your own stuff I mean how fun is that Okay, let's just fold this. I always like accenting this little line here. I just think it makes it look extra groovy. Okay, I'm going to accent my, my faux pas here. It's going to look ridiculous, but um, you get the idea. You'll, you'll fold it better than I did. My glue grabbed, so I couldn't pull it off, but yeah, you can do that. Oh, I should do the, a little bit more here. And you can even, like where, they, where you did the lining, where the lines lined up to make it look like an envelope. I mean, an envelope is just paper. That's all it is. Okay, so now we have that. That's kind of cool, right? <clears throat> okay, what do we have left to play with that we can make a card? Well, I think I am going to take a piece of cardstock this time. I'm going to have to do some trimming. Okay, let's make a little mark. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to make a set of cards for somebody? So you could even do it like outside of a junk journal. It doesn't have to doesn't have to be an injector, but you can make them like 10 cards and give them as a gift. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be so cool. I mean, I would love that if somebody gave me that. That would be like cat's meow, cat's meow. Meow, meow, meow. Extra meows. Extra meows. <laughs> um, so you, 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 if you just have thicker paper, again, this does not have to be cardstock, but I just, because I'm making a card, I thought I'd use cardstock. And this is 110 pound weight cardstock. If anybody's wondering. And uh, this is the stuff that I use. I print my um, DigiKits on, the printables, so that people can, they're, they're a little thicker, they're easier to use for pockets and tucks and journal cards and things like that. And apparently greeting cards. Okay, so I'm just going to fold this in half. I think that's going to, and you, you don't even have to fold it in half exactly. Some card designs do this, and there's some kind of design down here, but we're just going to go traditional, very easy. We'll have a little fun with it. We're not going to be like totally traditional. No, that would, no, no, no. And I know all the card people, there's like really, really amazing card people out there. And you're all like, oh, she needs to do this. She needs to do that. And you're right. And I don't know any of that stuff because I'm a novice card maker. So I make basic cards. I'm going to round the edges because this is me fancying it up. This is me. Super fancy. I have a super fancy card now. Maybe I'll even fancy card the up. Look at me doing it all corners. This is, what is it? It's a crocodile corner chomper. Yeah, there you go. And uh, it, it has, it can big round the edges or small round the edges, but now we have that, which I think is kind of cool. So now I want to make it look like it belongs. Like it was part of the whole ensemble, the idea. It's an orchestra card. It goes together. We have to put something on it. That's basically what we have to do. Okay, so let me get rid of the white. And I'm like, mm-hmm. Maybe I'll tear this because I'm feeling wild now that I've had to, I've had to measure I didn't want to, but I did. 
Okay, so I guess we're just going to take it here because that's there. And I don't, that's the easiest way to handle that. Okay, well that wasn't so good. All right, let's try that. Let's just get rid of that little piece. All right, okay. Now, we have some, what side is better? I think this has more music on it. Okay, so let's round the edges. Oh, this is super simple. There's nothing fancy about this. It's just like we're, we're liking to make some very basic handmade matching greeting cards. Greeting stationery. Greeting stationery. What was that? Um, There's a new product line we're starting. It's called Greeting Stationery. Ow. <laughs> Apparently the universe doesn't like me making that, so I won't make it. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Where's the back? Oh, this was black soot, in case anybody wondered. Black soot distressing. Just regular old black ink will work. Um, and I'm just going to make it match the other thing. Oops. Yeah, it's okay if it's not perfect because we'd have to start over a million times and that's just never going to happen in my world. We just carry on. We cover things up. We carry on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we could put that there. Okay, so we have something that looks like... Is that, that's upside down, Pam. Okay, look at the words. Okay, so we have that. Maybe let's use the... Scotch Create glue stick. Let's get glue all over our mat. Let's do it. Okay, go out to the corners so you know you get the corners. That's always a good way to start. And then, and then try for the rest. That's the backup. <laughs> but at least if you get those corners, you're pretty golden. Put your cap on this because this does get hard and rubbery if you don't put the cap on it. So don't forget that. Okay, here. That's the right way, putting it on. You have a second to move it around because it doesn't grab instantly. You eyeball from hoping for center, hoping. Okay, I think we got it, I think we got it. Okay, now I think I'm gonna come in with, oh, I don't have it, hang on. I need my Stabilo. Stabilo Aquarellable Water Dissolvable Graphite Pencil, which I'm going to, <clears throat> where is it? Looking. Looking, I'm in, the, I'm in the thing, it should be here. It should be right there, and it's not. Why? Okay, I'll go, back, I'll go into my second place of where it should be, in the pencil drawer, because I have like a cluster of these. I think I bought them in threes or something. Okay, where's the, here's a bunch. Here's a bunch, here's a bunch. Can I get a sharp one? Oh, did I get, no, nope, that's the wrong brand. Here, this is the right brand, but it's not super sharp. And, I think I have enough on the nib. I think we can do it. Okay, so here's my, my grand technique. Not much. Water. This is my water cup. Here. Oh, no, I wasn't supposed to do that. Never mind. I was supposed to dry, go around with dry pencil first and then come with the water. See, I can't even remember my own technique. Like, I, it's my technique. It's not my technique. It's somebody way more brilliant than me. Um, okay, so now... You can do it with your finger or a Q-tip. Both will work. Uh, get you a little closer. All right. Uh huh. Focus. Water cup. Q-tip. Run around. Well, we're just amplifying our focal point. Messy is good here. Grungy, messy. If you want to do grungy steampunk designs, get one of these pencils. They're Freaking awesome. Did I just say that? I did. Okay, because they're freaking awesome. You take this and wipe that on your shorts because nobody's looking. <laughs> and I, I might go around and just give a little emphasis. Probably don't need to do this part, but I, I am. Um, maybe I'll do a little on the back because I'm probably getting little markies uh, from my craft mat and I want to make it look like it's all part of the rustic, grungy, steampunky kind of design. Maybe I'll put my stamp on the back. Okay. And then maybe we need something here for more focally. We want to be more focally. You know what I mean? I'm going to amp up the focus. I'm going to go into my little stamped backup so you can see better. This is my punched collection of whatnot. And let's see. Oh, that would be kind of cool. Just like that. That looks kind of cool. I like that. I'm just going to put it. It's very thin. This is um, construction paper. Yeah, nothing fancy, but great to punch shapes out of if you want background shapes and stuff like that. And I'm not going to build this design up too big because I want it to go in a junk journal. So 
don't want it to be flat, but I can still have fun. I can still have fun and make it uh, kind of cool. Okay, going for center. Not bad, not bad. She did all right. And um, what else could I do in a land of craziness? Did I have one of those pens that actually works? Let's, let's pull out a white pen. Okay, we have the Breath White Gel Pen. Don't know if it's going to work. Now, this one's usually pretty reliable. The Signa Uniball. I love these, but I haven't used these in 100 years, so it could be dry. And gel pens really dry out fast, so let's, let's just see what's going on here. Um, it would be nice if I had something darker to write on. Okay, let's kind of rough. Let's see if we get... Okay, it's probably nothing here. Okay, dry and a big fat nothing. Yeah, I, these gel pens, they just dry out, and then you're, you're dead in the water. I've got a little something here. A little something going on. Maybe I'll try. I'm going to try and do a little design or something with the white gel pen, just because it's here. I'll just... Very simple at first in case it doesn't work. Oh, that's working. That's good. Okay, so Signa. Signo, what is it? Somebody tell her, please, so people can know. Uniball. Come on, focus. Uniball, Signo, whatever that says. Yeah. And this is, okay, if you can read that. Oh, you can't even see it. You, can, you got that? You got that? Uh-huh. Yeah, sure you do. And uh, that's the rest of it. But anyway, just look up white gel pens, Signo. They're, they're pretty good. I mean, this one, honestly, I haven't touched, I don't know, maybe in six months. And look at that. We're still working. Mama's very happy. Okay, I'm just going to... Okay, now I'm playing. This is playing. This is like random trying to make some petal things going here. I don't know what I'm doing at this point. Just kind of giving it a little extra. And maybe we'll just do some dots in the center to give it central focal amazement. Now we have central focal amazement. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? I know. I know. But what have we done? We do we, Now, you're inside. You could leave blank. Many cards are blank note cards on the inside. And totally, you give the person the gift of choosing what this is for. Is it going to be a birthday card? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? But you don't have to totally hold back. You could totally come in with something like this, which is what I call a nondescript peg stamp, which just gives them a little focal point to start with. Let's see if I can not screw this up too bad. Um, and maybe I'm just going to put it over here in the corner. There, that's it. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm walking away. You could put lines. You could put like a, a design up here and leave this blank. So there are things. <laughs> is that dry? I hope so. Um, so yeah. Isn't that fun? So here's like a nice way to make a little greeting card. Okay, the card probably could have been a little bit bigger, but you know, it's not bad for a handmade card. Wait, you know, what do you want from me? I'm a, I'm a human struggling here with paper, learning on the fly. Just as I imagine many of you are. I do do this inner side. Now, if I had a matching one of those thingies, I could even put that on the outside. Do I? Do I? Oh, what's that? That's not a matching thing, but it's sort of. Oh, that I could do that. That looks kind of cool. Or I could even do that. See? You can do these things. Or you could do this. But I think maybe that. I don't know if I don't have one of those other things. I probably only punched one and left. You know what I mean? I was a lazy puncher that day. I don't see one in here. No, 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 no. Oh, this is kind of pretty. All right, we'll just go ahead and glue this down because I just think that looks cute. Um... Use a forever fix. This was a, something I punched out of some harder paper. It doesn't have to be hard paper. It could be softer paper too. So if you have some blacks and contrasting, that can kind of look cool. There. And you could even put something on top of that just to give it a little pizzazz. Here's like a little, oh, that's kind of neat. This is, um, somebody punched this out of wax paper, which I think is really cool. I don't know how they did that. Maybe it makes it easier or harder. I would think it would be harder to do, but they did it probably on some super fancy machine with great patience and um, deftness of technique and they're very dexterous and beyond me. Okay, so I put this down. I hope those glue things don't show. Oh, maybe they show. So guess what? If they don't dry clear, because I fubbled it, we gotta, we gotta cover it up. So then we're gonna look something that's solid. Oh, what are you? Oh, you are cute. Um, no, I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh, you guys are cute, and you're black and white. There, we could do that. That's cute, right? Okay, this is probably one of those Tim Holtz people things. 
Do I want to take that out? Probably not because I need to hide the glue. Okay, so let's hide the glue. Let's leave that little weird piece right in place. I'm not taking it out. We're just going to glue it on there. That's how these things happen. Sometimes you don't know the actual oops design until you're done because you're trying to hide something um, that didn't go as planned. And often what we think looks horrible and doesn't go as planned looks fine. You know, we're, we're our own worst critics a thousand times over. I have my sister-in-law here and she is paint, watercolor painting and she is doing some landscapes and she comes over, she goes, I really like my picture, but those birds I did in the corner, they're horrible. And I look at it and I think it's amazing. So there you go. Okay. Ta-da! Done. Okay, so I think we did pretty good. Where's the other one? We did make two, right? And you were here and witnessed both. And I put it where? Hang on, let me look for it. Okay, how many of you realized I tucked it into the journal that we made? Yeah. Okay, that took me about 10 minutes to figure out. Yeah, that, that's kind of crazy. I'm like, where is it? I know I made one. I even found a lookalike butterfly, and I thought maybe this butterfly came off. And that's why I can't find it. I looked through all my paper. I'm losing my mind. I'm totally losing my mind. I don't know where that journal Where is it? It's here somewhere. It's in a big pocket tuck thing. I'll find it. Hang on. Hold your breath. It's here somewhere. And it can't go far. It was in this journal. This is called the quick flip through. Um, maybe I won't have to do a flip through when this one's done. I'll just say, hey, go look back when she couldn't find the thing she made and she stuck it in there. It was in here, right? Yeah, I'm sure it was in here. That's the only journal I'm working on right now. Uh -huh, found you, found you. <laughs> okay, I will put it back in there though. But there you go. There you go. Very nice. We'll just use this for some decor. Yeah, for the picture, the final picture. There you go, folks. Um, what? Sunshine? Where are you? No, you're not here. Where are you? Did you go somewhere? Oh, I think he's, he's upstairs with my sister-in-law, so I can't. Okay. If Sunny was going to say something, he would say, I love you all and happy crafting. There we go. That's what we got from Sunshine today. So, uh, welcome to everybody who is here. If you are new, just a couple ditties you might be interested in knowing. I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. And what I'm going to do is a lot of people ask me to add them to the newsletter. Uh, but the link is down below in the description box. But if you're unable to access that... Okay, I'm back. <laughs> now this is funny. Okay, if you would like to sign up for the Paper Outpost free monthly newsletter where you get a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, a free digital image that you can download every month and use in your artwork to uh, create or sell the in your artwork, um, uh, junk journal tips, updates from me, mm, um, peeks at new digi kits coming out, a list of ideas to break the blank page, um, there's a freebie section at the very bottom, check it out, and here is the link, it says HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash bit dot l e uh, l y forward slash paper outpost newsletter okay got a little tight there at the end but that's l e t t e r in case you're not sure um yeah so that's it if you can if you are not able to do the drop down uh thingy so what else can I tell you? I can tell you that uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, the new audio material comes out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but I have video podcasts that go up every other day of the week. Um, you can watch those on Spotify. And I have fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers, over 100 plus pieces in every pack. And um, I mail these out to you. It includes free priority mail shipping. You're going to get all sorts of fun pieces in here. Um, a lot of collectible pieces, old pieces, old antique ledger, old checks, old receipts, old postcards, old black and white photos. Really cool stuff. Uh, very fun. Um, and you just never know what you're going to find. Um, old dictionary pages, old music paper. Um, there's a nature section. There's... Um, a science section, there's, there's all these really cool sections and um, the stock is always changing, you know, but I try and, I try and stay in those categories, like I'll always have antique ledger, I'll always have old checks, I'll always, you know, ta da ta ta um, When I have it, I have um, uh, old piano roll paper, you know, the uh, um, 
automatic pianos that used to play back then. Um, when you walked into the saloon, it'd be playing on itself, uh, on itself, <laughs> it'd be playing by itself. Um, some old handwritten letters, photos, yeah, that kind of fun stuff. Okay. I offer a print and mail service for those folks who would like to do the printables or what I, what I call digi kits. Um, so basically you're going to get, um, like five pages of something like this printed out on that lightweight cardstock and um, 110 pound weight. And I, if you give me the name, you don't need to buy every digi kit. All you need to do is buy the print and mail option. And the easiest way to find that is to go to www.thepaperoutpost.com. And that's a special Etsy, Etsy, that's a special Etsy website set up to only show my things. Because when you go to regular Etsy, it mixes up stuff. You'll see my things mixed with other people's things. And sometimes you're buying stuff. You think it's for me. It's not for me. It's from other, st other people. So you really have to check every store name when you buy something. Or Etsy gave us this option to set up our own websites, which I do pay an extra fee to, to, to have that. But that way you only see my stuff. When you, then you're going to find the print and mail option. You buy that. And then you send me a list of the 10 DigiKits names that you want. I'm sorry there's no easy drop down menu where I can list all my 200 and you can just go pick from them. Um, it doesn't work that way on Etsy. I wish it did, but it doesn't. So I need you to either Etsy message me the list of 10, which is the easiest, or you can send me a message to my email, well, falling off my chair, which is pam at the paper And um, I could write that neater. I know, I know. And um, I should write it on here. Um, just send me the list there. I only need the first two or three words and you are golden and that is on its way to you and free priority mail shipping is included. And what else? What else? Um, I have an Amazon shop. So if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies or weird things that you see me use and you're looking for a link, I try and put links to everything that I use in there. It does help my shop when you use the links, but you do not pay more for the items because you use my links. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a mug, a tote, or a water bottle. And um, yeah, that can be pretty dandy. And um, um, what else? Um, great for gift giving for yourself or for others, other crafty folk. Um, you can find me on social media on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, I have a Facebook group. Come and join our Facebook group. It's called the Paper Outpost Facebook group. And we're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges as well as seeing what you guys make from these videos. And um, that's pretty much it. So remember to have fun. Remember, fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon. Just go have some fun and, and make some uh, uh, matching greeting cards with their book pages that you have. And let's do this. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.